What I'm working on, which is not talked about a lot because it's, it's in the commercial realm, is there's been a team of seven chemists working on much better molecules than any of these two that I'm talking about, um, super NAD boosters. And we have ones that work far better than NMN. And these are timed release, these are what we call pro-drugs. And uh, those are the ones that I'm really excited about for medicines of the future that don't just increase someone's endurance, but could actually treat diabetes and heart disease and cancer and Alzheimer's. That said, we are doing a, a clinical trial right now with a molecule called MIB626. Um, MIB is, is just Metro Biotech. And that's a, a couple of clinical trials that have been done at Brigham and Wynnum Women's Hospital in Boston. Um, separate group from me, it's all independent. Uh, and they, that's just a safety study. So uh, when I come back on your show, if I come back on your show, I may be able to tell you if we see some actual efficacy, some results. We're going to be looking in the phase two study at strength and endurance in the, in the, the muscle of people after some NMN dosing. So we're on the, on the verge of knowing if this is real or not for people. About NAD. And interestingly, I've been working with a team uh, in Boston on making an NAD precursor a drug. And so for the last two years, with the help of a great team at Brigham and Women's Hospital, they've been testing the safety and efficacy of uh, an NAD precursor called MIB626, uh, which is a proprietary version of an NAD booster, is that so far the molecule is extremely safe in the people that have been tested. It's able to greatly raise NAD levels. Now, uh, there's just some debate out there in the Twitterverse that the molecules that we work on in my lab and at, at uh, in these clinical trials don't raise NAD and are not effective. Well, I can tell you that you probably shouldn't get your scientific uh, information from Twitter because it's completely wrong. And now what's interesting and exciting is that in the next few weeks, very extensive double-blind placebo-controlled study is about to begin with this molecule. And we'll see pretty quickly, I think, whether patients are helped by raising an AD particularly the, the more severe ones. Now, there are anecdotal case studies. Already, some of them are online that you can look up if you're interested of patients recovering quite rapidly, supposedly, with treatment with NAD boosters like NMN, which is one of the, the ones that we work on. But those individual case studies don't prove anything, as we now know from you know, having studied other molecules and other people studied molecules in the world for COVID-19. So that's why we've decided to do this very rigorous placebo-controlled study and not just go for compassionate use. Uh, and we'll see over the next few weeks, perhaps a few months, realistically, whether this molecule that we're working on is going to dampen the inflammatory response in patients that uh, really need it. You know, drugs are very hard to make. Most of them don't work. So I'm, I'm not promising anything. I'm not expecting too much. Uh, but I think that we need to give this a shot. And the other reason for believing in this work is that aging, as I started out in this review and uh, this talk, uh, mentioning, we think aging is the major driver of COVID-19 susceptibility, aging of all of the different parts of the body, in particular, the immune and circulatory systems. Now, if we can delay aging or reverse it, perhaps in some way with NAD boosting or with other drugs that are out there, such as metformin, which Neil Barzilai is arguing could be used to bring down blood sugar to improve the body's survival, these kind of uh, longevity molecules could be used to bring not just the virus down, but boost the survival and the resilience and the defenses of the host up in the same way that uh, you don't just have weapons of war, you have defenses as well. And so on the defensive side, I think bringing up the defenses of the aged is just as valid, if not more important than attacking the virus itself. So why would I say it's, it's just as important or more important? Well, consider that this is not the only virus that's going to attack humanity going forward. And vaccines, while they're great and we hold out for one, it probably won't work against the next outbreak, whether whether it's bird flu, regular flu, or another coronavirus, or even a mutated version of this one that's out in the population. So we need to work also on the body's ability to fight infections in general. Yeah.